I'm Dessa. Welcome to church. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And, all the, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Word of God for the people of God. Morning, Joy. It can be so easy to miss small stories when they're nestled next to giant ones. Today's story that Anna read comes after Pentecost and this fresh outpouring of God's spirit to his people. And the disciples found themselves in a strange new existence. Their world had changed drastically. And in fact, the entirety of human existence had just changed from underneath them. You see, they no longer needed priests or to offer sacrifices on their behalf. And God didn't communicate just through prophets, kings, and tablets. But God's own spirit saturating their hearts and their souls. People could literally feel God's presence within them. And people didn't need to fear death anymore. Jesus' death and resurrection made it abundantly clear that even death was under God's control. And a brand new community was beginning. This community is made up of people not defined by ancestry, nationality, or skin color, but by God's own invitation. And this community would be defined by sincere, action-oriented love. And these verses mark the creation and the beginning of the church. And they give us a roadmap today for doing life in this new community. I, I want to read it one more time. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone is filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anybody who had a need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. I actually really, I really like these verses because this is how we do life as a community, this is how we do church. It's, it's, it's really simple. Learn together, eat together, help other people, and gather, hang out with each other. I, I get wary of using scriptures to extract mission statements, but I think we can follow this reading as maybe a roadmap. You see, this community is inherently attractional. I, I want to be a part of this. It's not try hard, repackaged, overly branded church. It's, it's real and it's authentic. And I think this is what the world needs, especially now. We need simple authenticity. You see, our world has changed drastically. And the reality is, as much as people would like, I have a feeling this isn't ending soon or with a definitive conclusion. This new way of life in which we've found ourselves is now a part of our new reality. We're going to have to rely on the Spirit, the Spirit of God, to figure out how to do life in a brand new way. How to, how to do church in a brand new way. Just as some bewildered confused disciples had to a few thousand years ago. We will have to walk by faith. And we're going to have to learn how to serve and love each other in brand new and creative ways. 
biblical order is always important. There, things are hardly ever random in their lineup in the timeline of the Bible. And so you have to pay attention to the order of stories. The story immediately preceding today's reading is the Holy Spirit coming at Pentecost. Peter then establishes a new way of doing church, and then there's our little set of verses this morning about what the church was up to, how it functioned, and how their time was spent. You have all these epic accounts of tongues of fire resting on the apostles. They began to speak languages they didn't know before. And hundreds were converted to the community of Christ followers of the way. And then there's this little narrative smashed in there. And the question is, is what is the author trying to say? What is God trying to say by including this story where it is? I love that while everyone is amazed and records in scripture all the miraculous God events happening around them, they also thought it was impressive to mention the kind of community they were living in. I bet you have experienced this. Actually, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that the, uh, you have. And, and this is my favorite thing about church. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, I love exuberant worship and uh, impressive mission trip stories and the uh, epic splendor of Easter and Christmas. But my favorite thing about church is the people and the fellowship. When people ask me, what do I love about church? I tell them that, that there's this sweetness of fellowship. There's this authentic love that just permeates the fabric of this community. That it's not the building, the chairs, or, or even the food at the potluck. It's the people. When you see how a, a community of people takes care of each other, encourages one another, or mourns a loss together. That's what's impressive to me. I, I'm not in awe of, of church buildings or yearly celebrations. I am in awe of God working through people. This morning I want you to hear some stories of God working through people and uh, them giving of their time to serve. The Sunbergs have been volunteering at a food pantry in Milwaukee. They go up a few days a week. Glenda, a certified nurse, interfaces with the public, handing out food and face masks, while John, her husband, and her son Ryan hustle in the warehouse, packing up hundreds of pounds of food. I wanted to hear their perspective and their heart on serving. Why is it impressive when someone serves or does something out of the ordinary to help another human being? I mean, it's, I think it's, it's a good example just to, to um, be outside yourself, right? And, and I think there's so much of uh, me first attitudes that it, it's nice to see um, how can we help? How can we help others? I mean, what, what, what else am I going to do? What's my mission here? And uh, so to me, it's a fulfillment of that. I sort of feel the same way. I mean, I think you're not truly living if you're not helping others in some capacity. If you're just, um, if you're just um, every man for himself and wanting to um, have the best life possible for, for just your family and people you know, I think you're missing out on opportunities to learn and grow about other cultures, other languages, um, other ways of living, other uh, and when you get to step into those environments, they teach you more than you could possibly teach yourself around certain things. Um, part part of what I see you guys um, as a family, you just have a joy about you, even even with the circumstances that you guys have faced as a family. Glenda, you you got beaned by a truck. Lydia's uh, faced a lot of medical difficulties. Like. But each one, you guys pick yourselves up, and not only do you pick yourselves up, but you, like you find you find a cause, you find something that that is like passionate to you, and you chase it. And uh, so, like the, the I think my question, you know, as well formed as Colin gets, is like what what does that do to what does that do to your heart making that conscientious choice to serve? I, just, I think there's just 
just in our blood. It's like, um, they, I'm not going to, I, I love it. I'm not going down that rabbit hole. I'm not going to go to that dark place. I'm going to find a solution. I'm going to, to, you know, if your daughter has lupus, you go figure out how to make that like really impactful for her and for the lupus community. Um, if you're working in inner city with the most vulnerable and you see every day what they need and there's an epidemic or pandemic, you go find this, the food pantry in their neighborhood and you help. I mean, you just always help. You always step in where your heart pulls you to go and it pays you back tenfold every time because it connects the things that your heart that are heavy on your heart and it gives you hope and answers and solutions instead of just frustration or hiding um, in your own, I, I call it my own little bubble. I don't, I, I need to recover in my bubble, but I don't want to live in my bubble. I want to go help the community and the world. Mary Forte has become a one woman face mask factory pumping out hundreds of masks to family and friends and medical personnel. She has donated over 300 masks to frontline care workers, and I wanted to hear what impact serving has had on her. I mean, it's, it's, I'm just doing what I can do. Um, but for the person that's, that's wearing the mask that you made them, that's a pretty big deal. Like, you know, or the person that got uh, some food from the Sunbergs, or I know for me, like if I'm having a, a bummer of a day, I can tune in at 6.30. Right. You know, and, and right. get a little burst of joy from the Flores. Um, so, like, was I, I'm trying to form my question, but was it something that was a conscious choice, where, or was it just kind of an automatic, where, like, well, that's just what you do? You know, like, uh, what clicked in for you? Because, like, you, you've, you've definitely, you have a trajectory and a purpose right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I'm not really sure, you know, what that is some days, but I had heard early on when they were having problems, you know, getting the masks to the medical field, that's where it all started. And I knew I had a ton of fabric at home, and I knew that, you know, I, I had the skill set to do it. And I think that it just was like something that my God was telling me, you need to do this, you, you need to help these people who can't be protected without the resources that, that normally would have been available. Now, I know the ones that I make are not nearly what the N95s are, but they were certainly better than nothing because they had a pocket in them. And yeah. What do you think it does to a person's heart uh, after a long period of serving do you notice a change uh, in yourself or others after like you know doing things for others yeah I think so I think it all started out you know small with the quilt ministry um, and being a part of that and and just knowing that you're reaching people and what it means to them and and personally um, that ministry um, hit real close to home a couple of weeks ago when my brother-in-law died and we sent a quilt from church to my sister and, and just hearing how that impacted her was huge because um, we get notes every once in a while but generally the quilt ministry we don't see a lot of feedback and we don't need a lot of feedback because we're doing it from our heart and knowing that, you know, the prayers are, are what's important, but when it impacts you personally and, and you get feedback from something like that, um, that's huge. And with the masks, just, you know, the thank yous that I've gotten from the nurses and the nursing homes and stuff, um, telling me what a difference it's made. I think that that just makes you want to do more and more and more. Yeah. Since the beginning of the quarantine, the Flory family has broadcast a daily worship service on Facebook Live to encourage the hearts and spirits of anyone wanting to tune in. Almost every day at 6.30 p.m., you can catch them singing their hearts out to God and also making it possible for others to join in. I wanted to know what inspired them and how they feel about serving others. Why is it?
do something to someone's brain when you see someone serve out of the ordinary to help other people? Like, what is it about it that is so, I don't know, attractional or different and maybe not the norm? I think sometimes for me, it makes you reflect on what you have and, and where you're blessed in your life and realize, hey, there are things you can do. And, and in sometimes any little thing matters, right? The more I volunteer when I go out to El Salvador, the more I realize that is, is that we're very blessed. This family, I think we, we try to humbly know that we are blessed with certain talents. And so um, like this, I believe, I believe it was Annie's idea to start doing this. And then we kind of yeah. just said, hey, let's, pardon? I said Annie and Sam. Yeah, Annie and Sam's idea and said, let's just, you know, uh, start doing this and we started seeing our family and our friends and stuff. So I think for me, it just, um, you know, I, I don't read through all the comments always. Uh, but when you I shouldn't read mine. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> when I see those comments from family, friends, people that I don't know, cause Robin's usually the one Facebook live and I, I don't know people that she talks to sometimes. And it's just, sometimes it's as simple as what you just said of, Hey, I just needed this. And you know what? We're doing it kind of for fun. Right. Not necessarily because we're trying to do that, but it just it makes me feel good that we do do that sometimes. Mary and hearing about the sunburns and just watching so much what other people are doing. I see people just decorate their windows and just help out neighbors like I know they're doing it not because they're in a different space, but in spite of the yuckiness, they're still like pushing forward, which to me takes even more energy. Yeah. Move forward and to try to find happiness. Yeah. Oh, we should probably, we should like do this for fun at first. Um, so we went on live one day and then you thought it was a really good idea. So, or mom thought it was a really good idea. So she was like, yeah, let's keep going. So, um, so we kept going and, and I don't know, like it's, it's the little people in my life that I haven't talked to in like three years that have like texted me and were like, Hey, I came to your live today and I really needed that. And I was like, I haven't seen you in like four years. <laughs> amazing so it's just the little things like that like we do get out of it it's just like people do come up to me or like text me and they're like this was amazing and i really needed this so what do you think it does to a person's heart when they consistently serve other people what, what does it do to your heart when you consistently serve others what does that mean <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the big hairy question how, do you feel? When, how does it make you feel how does it make people you feel doing. when you keep doing things for others and you serve others what does it do to your heart oh like how does it make, does you, it feel? make you feel well it affects my heart like right. with love and joy <sighs> that that's good mic drop that's good um i think after a while it really changes how you look to yourself and other people because like after just knowing that it also makes other people feel good like just knowing that also makes you like oh okay like I feel like it's a really good effect no matter what if it's like a little thing if it's a big thing like I just think it's always like a good outcome. Now I know that we can't meet in uh, buildings and, and breaking bread looks a little different but I have to believe that the same spirit that was poured out on those first believers in Acts 2.42, that, that gave them hope and inspired them to share what they had, I have to believe that spirit is still here with us. So today, I'm going to ask that a, a fresh wave of God's breath, Holy Spirit Numa, be poured out. I say pray big. So let's go to God in prayer together. God, wash away the temptation to think of ourselves as, as individuals protecting what is ours and inspire us to think of others. Show us what needs to be shared and not hoarded. Show us how to create fellowship and community in a brand new way through the power of your spirit. God, help us again have an overwhelming sense of awe and wonder at your action in our midst. And God, 
We believe that current circumstances cannot stop the power of your church gathered by your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come here, Dessa. Come here, Anna. So there you go. You and cameras. Outstanding. All right. So look at that one. Th th not that one. That one. All right, Anna. Come on uh, over here a little bit. Nope. There we go. Just because your head's being cut off. Do you see it? Yes. Okay. All right, we're going to put this animal right here for now, okay, please? There we go. Okay. And we're going to try to be happy because they're going to they might be a little sad as well, okay? All right. Hi, Joy. Uh this is the Cranmer family and uh this is the by far the strangest goodbye uh that I think uh has ever been done. <laughs> but we want to say uh, a heartfelt thank you 
and goodbye to you, Joy. Uh, not even a goodbye, kind of a see you later. We're up the street. <laughs> and our hope is that we will partner in Kingdom activities from now until forever. Uh, we do want to say that we are so very thankful for all the love and friendship and care our family has received. We would consider Joy our spiritual home. It's where both our kids learned uh, about Jesus and learned about how much he loves them. And uh, I think the very reason that we are able to launch into a new season of ministry and taking care of a, uh, of a new flock of people is because of all the love <laughs> that we have experienced at Joy. Um, and uh, it's that kind of sweetness of community and love and care uh, that we are already starting to see at St. Mark's, and we can't wait to be nurturers of the community at St. Mark's that we've experienced at Wee. Joy. We love you tons, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure we will see you uh, around very much so and uh, please stay in contact with us we love you oodles and oodles and noodles and Dessa is looking at a camera like it is a mirror and she's a big <laughs> fan of mirrors Yay! we love you very much Joy did anybody else want to say anything? me okay say it Dessa <laughs> okay speaking in tongues yes it's <laughs> apparently we're going to a Pentecostal church <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think I think that's I think that's what we got. We love she you very much. Too. And <laughs> scene. Bye, Bye Colin. Colin. We'll, we'll miss, miss you. you. Hey Colin, just wanted to stop and say we're gonna miss you, my dear friend. Good luck on your new adventure, and thank you for all the years of service you've given to Joy Lutheran Church. Thank you so much for supporting me in my faith journey over the years and only being a phone call away when I need advice. I'm so blessed to have you as a mentor in my life. Good luck. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me for the past five years. I'm gonna miss you so much and your dad jokes. Thank you, Colin. We'll miss you. Thanks for always going the extra mile, Colin. Thank you, Colin. I really will miss your sense of humor. We grabbed you a gift card to a new restaurant on the moon. It's got great food, but no atmosphere. Colin, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I wanted to wish you best of luck in your new endeavor. I am certainly going to miss you. Miss all the things that you have done for my kids, for our family, and also for me. Uh, you taught me a great way of how to just interact with a lot of people and bring out the best in others. So I'm going to miss you, man. I wish you nothing but the best, and I will look forward to still seeing you around. Take care. God bless. We were all very lucky to have you as a youth pastor, and I will miss you a lot. Colin, thank you for all you've done for the Sunberg family. We had a blast serving with you. Thank you for helping me grow in my faith. Good luck. Hey, Colin. Thanks for all the years of youth group fun. And thanks for growing my kids' faith in God's only son. You will be missed. Good luck. Thank you, Colin, for all that you've done for Joy's youth and the church. You will be greatly missed. And I will definitely miss watching you knock down the pillows at pads. Hi, Colin. Kristen here. I just want to share two quick memories with you. The first one being our first mission trip together when we ended up in the ER, the ER with Luke. Everything ended up being fine, so that was good. And just the second memory is just all five mission trips wrapped up together and just the amount of laughter and laughter and laughter till our sides were split open that we had, especially this past one when we ended up having to go look for hot dogs on our arm. <laughs> anyway, love you, Colin. Alan, thanks so much for all the things you've done for the church and for my family and for my kids. And I want to especially thank you for the five weeks of freedom that you gave me, one each summer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, thanks. Colin. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Colin. Even in the short time I've known you, every time I see you, you've always managed to make every day fun and interesting. Hi Colin, just wanted to say that uh, I am so thankful for you. I'm thankful for the ways you have touched my kids' lives and the way you have brought them to Jesus. I uh, will miss you. Wish you all the best. Wait, who's Colin? <laughs> Colin, we wish you the best at your church that you're going to and plan on us visiting you and seeing you. Uh, I'm going to be there with my notes and my uh, pencil and uh, I'm going to raise my hand if I disagree with you when you're preaching at your new church. So that's just to keep you honest, okay? Go in peace, young man. Uh, God bless you. Goodbye. I just wanted to share my favorite memory, or one of my favorites, 
and that was when on the winter retreat you got the mic on and we were able to do karaoke and just sing our hearts out on stage um but thank you for everything that you've done and good luck thank you colin for teaching me how to be simultaneously authentically spiritual and ridiculously silly i will miss you what i'm gonna miss about colin most are his time management skills he always makes sure to stay organized and plan things out so we get to finish it hi colin and jay thank you so much for connecting us with the new causes near and dear special thanks for your huge support of our vision team we'll miss you Colin, God's blessings and peace to you as you begin this next phase of your journey to become a pastor. Joy's loss is definitely going to be St. Mark's game. Love to you and your family as you begin this next adventure. Hi, Colin. Just wanted to say a quick thank you for all that you've done for all this joy. Definitely miss seeing you around the church. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Love, Mr. Colin. What's up, Colin? Just wanted to thank you for the laughs and all the memories. Gonna miss you. Hey, Colin. Hey, it's the James Gang here. Uh, just wanted to wish you the very best of luck as you uh, head off um, to your new church. Uh, we just can't thank you enough for everything you've done for all of us. We are gonna love you and miss you so much. Bye, Colin. Love you. Thank you, Colin. We miss you already. Good luck at your new job. Hi, Colin. Hi. We're going to miss you. Bye. Love you. Hey, Colin. Thank you for helping me grow my relationship with Chris. And I'll miss you a lot. Bye. Thank you, Colin, for being a great youth pastor. Um, I really love that you have a great heart and are always wanting to help everyone, even when times are tough. I am really going to miss you as you move on and I wish you luck. Hey Colin, thank you for everything that you've done for our church and our youth. Thank you, Colin. I definitely miss Colin's sense of humor. He's a great guy who never fails to make me laugh. Thank you, Colin, for everything you've done for us in the church. We really appreciate it. Good luck. Colin, you and your family will be such a blessing to this new congregation. I will miss your sense of fun and your easygoing, approachable nature. Colin, thanks for everything you did for us at ATF. I can't begin to tell you how much we're going to miss you guys. Abundant blessings on this next chapter of your lives and your journey. I know God's going to bless it abundantly. Colin, we're going to so miss you at staff. Your sense of humor, the texts, none of that is going to be the same without you. And for the very last time, Colin, can you please pass the chalk? We love you guys. Hey, Trey, what do Colin and the water at Niagara Falls have in common? I don't know what. They both will be missed. Colin and Shay, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for everything you've done for our youth. Good luck. Colin, thank you so much for everything that you've done. You've been taking care of me since my first mission trip to Georgia, and I am definitely going to miss bonding over coffee with you. Hi, Colin. Thanks for being a good youth leader. May the Holy Spirit be with you throughout your life. We'll all miss you. Hi, Colin. Thanks for everything you've done for us. It's been a great ride and I'll miss you very much. One of my favorite memories is going over all of the speed bumps in Savannah, Georgia and hitting my head on the top of the car. Your new church will be lucky to have you, Colin. Good luck. Hi, Colin. Good luck on your new job. I'm going to miss you and your funny jokes. I hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye, buddy. It's been fun working with you. Hey Colin, thanks for being a great youth pastor. We'll all miss you. Thank you so much, Colin, for everything. I'll never forget how much you helped guide me as I was exploring my faith. We'll miss you, Colin. Thanks, Colin. We'll miss you. Thank you, Colin. Good luck.